Hello, this is Ricardo, Technical Marketing Engineer for Cisco Intersight. In this video, we are going to explore the OS install workflow in ICO. But before we do that, there are a number of prerequisites that we need to satisfy before we move forward with that. So under software repository, you should have an OS image link configured, as well as a school link. Of course, you will also need a server where you want to install the OS. So in this example, we're going to install ESXi. So we click on the orchestration tab and we can see that under sample workflow, there's a new workflow named operating system install. So we click on that and we can check how the workflow looks like. In general, we can see that there are a couple of inputs required. One is the server uh, where you want to install the OS. And the other one is the OS install input, which will uh, include all the parameters that are necessary to perform the installation. So we click on execute and as usual, we are going to specify an organization give it a name, then we select the server. In this case, I only have this one, so I'm gonna pick it. Then we have to pick an OS image. And again, I only have the SXI 6.5 Cisco image loaded in my software repository. So for the installation modes, we support the Cisco mode as well as the embedded mode. For this example, we're going to pick the Cisco installation mode. For the IP configuration type, we're gonna select a static IP, but we could also uh, select the HCP if I had one, IPv4, and of course the IPv4 address I want to assign to this server. I'm also going to specify the NetMask as well as the gateway to complete the network configuration. So the host name is going to be, of course, the host name that we are going to assign to the ESXi installation. For the name server, we're going to specify our DNS. as well as the root password that we want to assign to the root user in ESXi. So the SKU image is required for Cisco mode and is optional for the embedded mode. Since we are using the Cisco mode, I'm going to select one. And eventually I'm going to pick a target. We're gonna go ahead and execute the workflow. In my case, it's going to take about 30 minutes. We see here this little spinning wheel which represents the request of the workflow execution. If we click on that, we can have all the details of the execution itself. So back on servers, we can see now that Carson has this little spinning wheel. So again, this is the request of the OS installation in progress. So we're gonna go ahead and launch a tunnel KVM session to see what's going on. And we see that the server is actually rebooting. And after a few minutes, we can check that the server is now up and running and ready to be claimed in vCenter. All right, so that was the execution of the pre-canned workflow. 
what we can do is to create a more complex workflow, a compound workflow, which is going to deploy the server end to end. So we go ahead and create this um, compound workflow. We give the name deploy server. We're going to start with no inputs. In the designer tab, what I want to do, for instance, is to deploy a server profile to the server. Install the OS. And claim the system that we've just installed in vCenter with the new hypervisor host task. Okay, now we have all the three tasks. So let's go ahead and fill some inputs. So the deploy server profile is going to require a profile. We can either set it statically or we can use direct mapping and create the workflow input directly from there. We're gonna add it. And we move to the operative system install task. As we've seen, is going to ask for two inputs, the server and the OS install inputs. And again, we are going to use direct mapping to create a workflow input. So we had it and update it. And the same for the OS install parameters. Okay, to the new hypervisor host task, there are a quite a number of inputs to fill in. Again, the hypervisor, we don't want to set it statically. We kind of want to reuse the workflow. So we're going to create a workflow input. Same for data center. For the host, we want to use the same IP that we are assigning to the server and that we are going to specify in the OS install inputs. So what we're going to do, we're going to edit it. We are using the red mapping, selecting the OS install inputs. And for the input data path, we are going to look for the IP before that we are assigned to the server. Go ahead and update. The username is going to be root. So we're going to set it statically. And the password is the same like we've done for the host. So we're going to go and select OS install inputs and select the root password. We also want the host to be connected immediately as it boots up. When we're done, we can save and validate and eventually execute the workflow.